Who am I? Finding it hard to remember. Didn't I used to work with books? Spending my evening sipping whiskey while the rain fell outside the window. Was I not once a stupid young man, keen to delve into things I didn't understand just because all the cool kids were doing it? Was that me? Who am I now? Walking over the dead, like it's nothing. Calling to the void as if it wants to help me. What have these men done to me? Why have I done it all to myself? Dreams are so vivid now. I see myself walking through gunfire and hellfire. I see myself covered in the marks of the damned. Why has this happened to me? Do you know, Jenkins? I'm so sorry. I just want to wake up. Who is... James Carver. I don't think I know anymore. Maybe I will get an answer, though. Before the end. This is Red Moon Roleplay. Let's do it. You peer in quickly, and you see an electronic tactical map that's showing an image of Russia in this otherwise pitch black room. It's got military targets marked, air, army, navy bases, as well as the other missile bases. There's control panels for the missiles and uh, other facility systems that run along the walls. There's There are boy leg- legionnaires in here, just like the ones you fought before. You can hear them moving around. And, and kind of making these hissing noises to each other. And among them stands a man, up tall, just not even trying to hide. It's it's General Strelkov. He appears to be an image of the, the incarnate that you met in the dream, a short-grown, swarthy, rather fat man in his 40s, dressed in a Soviet general's uniform that's loaded with decorations. His black hair is cut millimeters short. There's there's an unpleasant, acrid stench that you you also smelled in the dream. It's likely coming from him. I'm going to quickly discern, since this is probably some sort of control center and determining from the map, they are pointing out their targets for the operation. Is there any sort of key mainframe that that the any of the boys were would be operating anything that could be destroyed to prevent the possible launch of these missiles a lot of these systems look very very important from what you know of these missile bases from your own um, military experience especially in this control room these are all key systems and uh It's good to take them out. You also know that in terms of launching nuclear missiles, um, he would probably need to have authorization from top leadership uh, of the country unless he's found some way of of bypassing the systems. So you don't think he, at this stage yet, would be able to launch nuclear missiles, but he might be able to launch some of the smaller tactical weapons from here. The the map, as you look at it, there is more targets centered around Leningrad than anywhere else. He has seen you, and he speaks. Now, now, let's not do anything rash. You've come here seeking me, I'm sure. Let us, let us talk before we kill each other. How, how about that? <laughs> Don't see the point. We'll ask you the same questions we always ask, and you'll, as always, not answer, or laugh, or say... It doesn't matter. We'll ask you, where's the third incarnate? We'll ask you why any of this is happening. We'll ask you why you need it. Poor random people like us to even do any of your silly ritual. And you will say nothing. Perhaps. But haven't you ever stopped to consider asking yourself 
why I'm doing what I'm doing and who you are really serving. We could talk about that if you would like. You seem to be doing, I look towards the screen for a moment, the same that every single silly fool in this world wants to do. Chaos, confusion, suffering, I look to the children, the suffering of them. Perhaps you wish to destabilize this country, to cause a war with another country. It's all the same rubbish. Now, now, you have me all wrong. It's quite the opposite. I am not looking to make our beautiful country weak. I'm looking to make it strong. It is pathetic and weak today. The Soviet Union is about to crumble with or without my help, and our nation will be humiliated and laughed at across the world. The fools, Gorbachev and Yeltsin, they have no regard for our national pride, and they simply wish to appease their friends in the West. The West cares nothing for us, don't you understand? They'll take advantage of us and leave us helpless. They hate us now, just like they have for the last 450 years, and we will always be their enemy. I will lead Russia to a new beginning, and a new dawn ushering in another golden age. Is that not something that you can get behind? Why do you wish to destroy that? Because you talk to us like this is important. This is beyond Russia and and countries and people. You are a servant of something horrible. And you wish to do this not for the greatness of this country, but to further the agenda of whatever master you serve and whatever realm he controls. Wasn't it you that got us here in the first place? Wasn't it you that gave us this curse? You were certainly part of the plan, and you have lived up to your the expectations that we had for you, and you have exceeded them. You are clearly quite capable. The people that you serve now, though, do you even know who they are? Do you even know what they are trying to do? They don't care about you. You serve Ivan Chizenko, correct? We don't serve Ivan Chizenko. He just pointed us in the way, just like you once fooled us in the wrong way. And this just gave us another hope to cling to. And this is what's supposed to remove this curse. What else are we supposed to do? There are options, of course. There are things that you could do instead. You could simply allow me to do what I am doing here. You could let me make Russia strong. You could let us usher in a, a world of lasting peace, of Pax Russica, and all you would really have to do is to leave. The road behind you is clear, after all. You have made sure of that. You can take your wounded comrades with you, and you, you don't look back. You don't need to, to serve Shezenko or... or <laughs> or his master, the Archon Bina. You don't need to serve them, you can serve yourselves. Get away from here before before you lose your lives here, before you lose anything that you have remaining. I think to myself, I'm just tired of this. I'm tired of being pushed around. I'm tired of, you know, getting cursed and then end up in the wrong place for the wrong people with new names, new demons' names, new angels' names, serving God, this or that. I just want to get rid of this curse. And I give Carver a tired look as I tighten my grip around the trigger, about to launch a grenade at this general. I clench my fist and I just remark, I don't have a choice in this matter anymore. You know that. I find it interesting that you offer this choice to us now. Your previous little friend wanted us dead. You've always just wanted us dead. I think the only reason you're even trying to fool us now is because you're afraid we could ruin it all for you. And you know what? That's fine. Because for all your talk, for all your lies, I point at one of the children. That. That is the legacy you want. That is the source of his power.
power and in your strong new world that is what you would make and I care not for who I serve or what they'll do with me. I just know that you are not going to succeed. Pity that. I thought you could be reasoned with. Well, I suppose I'll have to kill you now. Slaughter them for me, boys. And the boy legionnaires start to open fire and uh, you now stand before a decision. How do you try to tackle this situation? So can I burn my last edge, the last edge I've had for a while now, of my sixth sense? And I would like to, first of all, duck into the nearest cover that I can find and open a opening. You use opener of ways. Roll plus soul. I got 14. This portal will not last for very long, but perhaps you only need it for a short time period anyway. Where do you open it? Directly underneath the general. I look forward for a moment and I just tried to recall the experience on the plane. It was very similar to the other times we've travelled, but that time it was instinctive. It didn't need words, it didn't need ritual. I could just see, which I see before me now, the tear, and this place is full of them. It's so close to that boundary, and I just use my hands in front of me and just pull open beneath him. Yes, and you open the portal, and he uses his lightning-quick reflexes to move to the side, having felt what it is that you do. The portal is still open right next to him, and he's looking at that, and he's looking at you, and you can see some fear in his eyes. The boy legionnaires are opening fire. Uh, Bjorn, what do you do? I roll for my lightning fast, and uh, I get a... 9 plus 3 is 12 plus 4 is 16, so I got three uh, lightning edges. Seeing what's suddenly happening and his quick move and his sudden doubt, I want to exploit that using my own fast reflexes and try and launch a grenade on the other side of him from the portal to uns- to maybe destabilize him and getting towards it. So you use that edge and uh, the grenade explodes right where you wanted it to. As you're doing this, you are about to be engaged by all the boy legionnaires. The KGB is coming up behind you. Can you roll for uh, the KGB as well? Let's see, 7 plus 5 is 12, plus 4 is 16. You order them to move in, in, in a perfect manner, and they're able to get good shots in on the boy legionnaires, just as all these other things are happening with the grenade and the portal. The incarnate, he yells to the KGB soldiers, Kill your brothers! And you see how they start to shoot at each other. Not all of them, but some of them. Roll a d10. Seven. You see how Corporal Tereshkov is shot in the head by one of the other KGB soldiers. He's, uh, his left eye explodes and he screams for a short while, twitching. Six of the other KGB soldiers also go down. Uh, this is when the grenade goes off behind Strelkov and he sort of stumbles into this open portal that Carver has opened and he disappears from your sight. The boy legionnaires are, are, are down. Carver and Bjorn, what do you do now? Yes, we follow him. We need to kill him still. All right, and I uh, I leap up from uh, where I was kneeling and I uh, run uh, uh, and try to get after, after him as quickly as I can. As will I. Yes, and you run in and you get into the portal and you end up in this place that you have been before, Carver, this ocean with the heat shimmer and the yellow sky and the black sun. And you find the incarnate. He's standing here, looking around, looking absolutely panicked. You step out of the portal and he has his weapon with him, an AKM, that he's starting to reach for uh, to try to shoot at you. What do you do? I will roll, just roll, try to dodge out of the way and try and let Bjorn be forefront in this situation. I try to hit him with a grenade as quickly as I can. I roll 
8 plus 6, 14 plus 3, 17. You fire the grenade, and the grenade hits right smack into General Strelkov, where it explodes, and his body is just torn into pieces, just flying everywhere all over this, this, this ocean. You're sort of thrown back yourselves on top of this, this water, but you're, you're still on top of it. And there's only pieces left of, of the incarnate. And they're starting to sink down into the ocean. The black sun stares at you, Carver. I laugh a little at how easy it suddenly was. I was real right, separating him from his place, bringing him here. There's nothing, nothing left. Good. And I quickly sort of smack Bjorn on the back and just point to the portal and go, back in now, now. Yes, the portal is about to close. And you run for it, and you make it back just as it explodes with a bang. Your ears are are ringing, and you feel how blood is coming out of them. And you find yourself back in the control room with Topov and the few surviving KGB soldiers. It is now quiet in here. Something has happening, though. The boy soldiers... They go from becoming these twisted teenagers to being young boys wearing way too large uniforms, sort of aging in the wrong way, and then turn into a blue light that starts to ascend through the ceiling. You have set them free. I uh, stumble with a ringing in my ears, and I... And I rub my hand and I see the blood coming from them and I I look at this marvel at the same time as I don't really hear anything what's going on around me. Yes, and you you get up but look around you and you see this tactical map in front of you. There's these massive forces that are supposed to march from Leningrad in the next step of the plan, but these forces are much, much larger than anything that the Red Army has available in that area right now. Where is he going to get all these forces from? I uh, stumble over to the table and I look at this. This doesn't make any sense. What are these battalions? Lieutenant, (coughs) does this make any sense to you? He sort of stumbles over. Um, His face is completely bloody. Doesn't seem to be his own blood, though, fortunately. Uh, He's he's looking at the the tactical map. Uh, No, 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 sir, I... That doesn't make any sense. You're right. We don't have those kinds of forces in or around Leningrad. That's 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 almost as big as the entire Red Army. Where where would that come from? How how could Strelkov get those kinds of forces? Is it is there going to be an invasion there? What is the actual current situation in Leningrad? We know we've been told the city's been evacuated and quarantined. But what's actually happening in there? What does anyone even know? Sorry, it's it's above my pay grade. Let's get back to the surface. We we need to get out of here in any case. It, whatever's happening is going to happen in Leningrad, and it's going to happen soon. We, we I think we need to go. I nod and uh, I uh, let out a bit of a laugh, <laughs> tired laugh, and I look at Carver. Well, that was a <coughs> that was a good plan. Whatever you did. Yes, it it worked. It worked. It could work again. The question is, is this where the last one is? Behind this wall of, and I laugh, another wall of men and resources. (laughs) Back in Leningrad. Yes, and Topov starts to lead you up to the surface through the closest service exit here. You eventually get up. And you feel the light of the sun again, the warmth against your skin after having been down in that frozen hell. It's a cool, crispy autumn breeze that blows over the open farmland here. The sky, though, is filled with helicopters, hinds. They're patrolling and engaging small groups of uh, troops loyal to Strelkov, making short work of them. Topov throws a smoke grenade that gives off a thick green smoke. And you see that one of the helicopters starts 
heading for your location, hovering above you for a short while before landing. Just as it does so, a flight of SU-24 fencers make a low pass over the plane, then, then climb rapidly and make a hard turn to the west, disappearing beyond the forests. I, uh, remove my, uh, my hat, my military beanie hat, and I feel the breeze for a bit, and I just stroke the hand through my hair and rubs off any blood from my face. <clears throat> it's nice. <laughs> this is... This is nice. This is where I belong. Yeah. I just sort of lean against a, a wall for a moment. I feel so disconnected now. And yet for a moment, perhaps, when I confronted him, was that still me? It sounded like me. And yet I think about what he said. <laughs> I suppose in a way I didn't disagree with him. I'm probably now just another pawn in another game. It doesn't matter, though. It only matters that we win. Then I'll... Then I'll submit. There'll be no more point. As long as we win. And I uh, think about the uh, the children and the shimmer there, and I'm thinking that maybe soon, if we finish this, we'll be set free as well. Yes. And uh, a soldier wearing a KGB uniform steps out the back of the hind helicopter and runs off to you, holding his head down as he passes below the rotor. <clears throat> we have we have word from Zoya. It's it's happening in Leningrad now. The, the ground has started to rumble. Their plan is being executed, is what she's saying. Contact with Chesenko is lost, and the few forces we have in the city have come under heavy fire. My orders are to take you into the city and do what I can to help you find Chesenko. Uh, as we're making our way to then, I'm assuming, the aircraft or chopper, I, I just say to the soldier, Who is even Chizenkov to you? He is linked to the KGB? This is not uh, anything that uh, is clear to me. I believe he, he must be some kind of an agent. Uh, that's the only explanation I have. He, he works with, uh, with the Colonel uh, Selivanova. Uh, I report to her, she tells me what to do, and I do it. Yes. Of course he does, I just remarked to Bjorn. <laughs> it's all, like he said, Bjorn in a way. We probably are just helping some of us. I wonder if maybe it will turn out that this is all making things worse. <laughs> I laugh loudly. <laughs> and I shout over the swirling of the rotor blades. That's right, and now we're getting back again. Back to good old Leningrad. Maybe now that old man has finished your portrait, eh? <laughs> Something about that, really, I just fall silent. I'd almost been, for, in everything that's been happening, I've been more and more not really thinking about me anymore. I don't matter. But that, yes, that seemed to matter, didn't it? That mattered to James Carver. But why? What is the Black Madonna? What does it mean? Does it even matter anymore now I'm gone? I, d I just fall silent and get into the vehicle. You are in the helicopter, and it starts to take off. Inside is yourselves, Topov, and a fresh group of KGB soldiers from Grom Company. Seeing the state that you and Topov are in makes them look a bit worried at first, but, well, they quickly get over it. Topov nods to you. It's a long flight to Leningrad. Make yourselves comfortable. <laughs> did, did you see his face by the way did you see the general's face uh, <laughs> when he was when he was when he saw that uh, did you see the portal did you see what Carver did uh, top of uh, he has sort of doesn't really have much of an expression on his face he looks extremely distraught having lost pretty much his entire uh, team of soldiers probably people he has been training with for uh, for years and he musters a small smile and then just buries his uh, head in his hands it seems like it's all catching up with him now I'm not listening to a word he's saying really my mind it's so hard now to keep in one place I feel for Bjorn I feel for the man he shouldn't have had to see any of these things none of us should have had to see any of these things it's not fair 
not right. There's nothing we can do. Maybe there's nothing anyone can do, really. For a moment, as Bjorn's just chatting away, so carefree, almost. Seems to me, anyway. I just suddenly picture not us in a chopper, but just us in his flat, and Jenkins by my ankles, and I'm looking at a book, and we're just sharing a glass of whiskey as he chats, and that's actually quite nice. Yes. Yes, I just say yes to Bjorn. Yes. As I pet Jenkins on the head, look over a book, because I miss that so much. I miss it so much. And uh, through the uh, the journey, uh, I'll probably drift in and out of sort of hysteria and laughing about this, and then almost abruptly falling asleep, and then waking up again and giggling. Yes, the energy that you expended there, the adrenaline rush it has worn off and you feel quite tired and the rotor is like monotonously the sound, it's like a lullaby almost, it, it puts you briefly asleep, but you're awoken by pain your boils are bursting and yellow larvae expose their heads through the boils they start emitting a droning sound almost like chanting it's deafening. It, it even drowns out the sound of the helicopter. You're both awake and you both see this happening to each other. I scream. I, I, I try to tear them out with my hands. I bend my face down to them and I yell, Not yet! You can wait! Soon! Not yet! Yes, and you deliver that message top of uh, looks at you and looks away and they go back or away you're not sure you can see how the boils are starting to reform again And I pat my body and my skin, and like I'm, I'm pushing it back. I'm, uh, uh, and I just slump, and I breathe, and I, I look up to the ceiling, and I, I'm so tired. Mm-hmm. I just sort of nod. I remark to Bjorn, as I lean back again, closing my eyes. Not long now, not long now, and. Having drawn up my sleeves to the look at the boils, I noticeably now don't actually pull them back. I leave my arms covered now in those black, inky runes that are covering me slowly, fully exposed now. I don't really seem to care anymore. No. And as you're flying in over the old seat of the Tsar, you see explosions and anti-aircraft fire all around us. The KGB forces and the Red Army units that are loyal to the government face Strelkov's much larger force of deserters. They're going all out, and the price the civilian population must be paying for this is staggering. You see whole blocks incinerated by cluster bombs, paratroopers dropping on heavily defended positions, and MiG-29s from both sides engaged in a violent furball in the sky. The pilot speaks to you over the radio. We're headed to the Grand Hotel Europe in the center of town. We still control a sliver of land around there. The rest is lost. How is this happening? Who are you even fighting now? We're fighting the mutineers. It's Strelkov. They're trying another coup d'etat. This time with much more military forces than, than the last one. We must stop them at all costs. What are they trying to achieve? What is this even... Do! Don't they know Strelkov's dead? The pilot has no answer for you. You see tanks on the streets and people rushing away to avoid getting caught up in the violence. The Grand Hotel Europe, you see it now as the the back of the helicopter has, has opened. You're still hovering above the roof of this hotel. It's a majestic building that's now being shelled and hit by occasional bursts of fire from enemies on the other side of the street. You can hear bullets hitting the sides of the helicopter as well, but 
while this is known as the flying tank, unfortunately, it can take a few bumps. I uh, uh, take a deep breath and I start getting my things ready as um, as we stand there and as we're coming in. Yes, and the uh, uh, Mi-24, it hovers at a at such a low altitude that you can actually just jump out the back of the helicopter without hitting yourself uh, that bad. This uh, pilot is obviously very, very skilled and knows what he's doing. The other KGB troops start to to leave the helicopter, jumping onto the roof. I join them. Mm, yes, I start to leave. <clears throat> For a moment, I just sort of feel my throat. I feel the mark on the back of my neck, and I just... The only thing that still doesn't make sense now, well, one of the many things... How can this be so... drastic? We took out the general. We took out the other one. We took out the new president. Who is still controlling this? How... what are we missing? And you also get onto the roof, and the helicopter starts to leave the area. Um, you see it sort of flying um, away from you, and moments later you see it hit by a surface-to-air missile that uh, sends it crashing into one of the buildings on the street, the rotor tearing up walls before the entire chopper is ripped to shreds. As you move towards the entrance into the hotel, a uh, tank shell hits right into the building, throwing you to your feet. Quickly, let's get to the sewers. There's there's an entrance in the basement here, Top of yells to you. Right, right, let's go. Cara, come on. The air is filled with dust, plaster, and smoke as you're moving through this once majestic hotel and this really luxurious interior. Um, you cough as you move down through the building as you inhale this dust. Chandeliers drop from the ceiling as further shells hit and you hear the screaming of soldiers all around you, um, their bodies mangled by the incoming munitions. Some of the soldiers that were here in the hotel already, they're firing back with RPGs and AK-74s, but this does not seem to be a battle that they can hope to win. The KGB troops move with you efficiently, and they're seemingly able to block all of this out. And they take you down into the basement, where you find an ancient-looking grate. The KGB troops start to open it up, and you're hit by a horrible stench of, of refuse and of... of feces they start to move down into this it's it's knee deep uh, I was trying to smile and crack a joke but I just get caught by the stench and I'm uh, I put my feet down to go in yes I descend briefly throwing aside now the, the hoodie coat I was wearing it will just get in the way. Now I'm just wearing my basic clothing underneath, and yes, a little bit of our body armor that I, of course, on Bjorn's recommendation, did put on. But now, yes, my full arms, my face, tattoos, fully visible as I descend into this thick sewage. You notice some of the soldiers sort of looking at that, but they don't seem to think particularly much about it. It's not really a time to think about things like that anyways. The explosions above grow distant and soon only the vibrations remain as you're moving through the knee-deep water down here. You also sense a low-intensity rumbling coming from below you, like a small earthquake that never stops. What's that? Do you feel that? Yeah. Yeah, says Topo, I have no, I have no idea what it is. This sewer, it will take us very close to the cathedral. That's the last place that Chesenko reported going to. Our mission is to bring you there, and then we will follow your commands. Kapitan Kutsev, he's doing a salute to you. I uh, salute back, and uh, said, good, let's push on. You're doing great. He nods. You're moving through these sewers... The stench, you get used to it. It is the least of your concerns, really. And you emerge in what must be some kind of an industrial area. Before you is not the church that you visited before, but a large cathedral built from basalt. Its ancient Gothic facade is lined with rotted stone heads that leer down at you. 
There's people here. At least a hundred soldiers. No. No, not, not ordinary soldiers. These are legionnaires, half rotting with festering wounds and exposed craniums, drooling, laughing maniacally, and howling. Chigidil's foot soldiers. They're wearing modern Soviet uniforms and are armed with AKMs similar looking to those the boys in the missile base had. There's machine guns set up. They're just standing around. These things look like they came straight out of hell. I will observe the situation. Nine, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I will ask, because I'm suddenly very uneased at this. Why are they... What is being hidden from us? Why? We've just been led here. Why are there servants of Jukidil here? What's going on? What's being hidden? You observe what's happening here, and you see all these, these hundred soldiers, they're just standing around again. The thing that strikes you is that their focus is towards the building rather than the outside. They're actually all facing the church, as if they're trying to keep something in rather than preventing someone from entering. The machine guns are also all pointed towards the church, towards the cathedral. And do we need to go through all these to get into the cathedral then? And Topov uh, looks to you. There's no other way into the cathedral. There's supposed to be some kind of crypts underneath there, but they're not connected to the sewer system. I think the only way is to go through them somehow. Do you think we might be able to uh, uh, get control of those machine guns? Or, uh, or are they actually going to care about us? Hmm. I turn to Carver. What do you think? What are they doing? They want to keep something in. They're waiting for something coming from... The, they're not defending the church. They, are wait, they want... It's like they want to attack the church, but the cathedral. But they're not... They're, they're waiting. They're waiting for something to try and come out. Why aren't we they attacking, to, then? I'm hmm. afraid. Maybe they need a distraction for us to get in. I could supply that. Carver, yes, when you look at the church, you feel that there is an extremely strong aura coming from there. There is something more powerful than you have ever felt before in there. And that must be one of the reasons why and why they're not daring to just go in there. You also sense a being in there that you have met before. Ivan Chezenko is in there. Ivan's in the church. We need to reach him. I can summon some assistance, or we can... <laughs> if you have a plan, Bjorn, I'd like to hear it, because I don't think we have time to do anything other than just get in there now. You're, as you're looking at this, you hear rustling in the leaves. An old man approaches you with his hands up. You recognize this man. It's the icon painter from the church. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the campaign The Black Madonna for the tabletop role-playing game Cult Divinity Lost. The Black Madonna was originally constructed by Gnila Jonsson and Mikael Petersen in 1991, with additional material for the 2017 edition by Marco Berman, Matthias Fredriksson, Petter Nallo and Robin Lillianberg. Cult Divinity Lost is published by Helmgast. The music was created by Atrium Carceri and is used with permission from their label Cryochamber. Visit cryochamber.bandcam.com or their YouTube channel to hear more excellent dark ambient. A new episode of Red Moon Roleplaying is released every Friday. Please like our Facebook page and give us comments, input and feedback there. You can also visit us at redmoonroleplaying.com. Finally, a big thank you to all supporters. If you want to show your appreciation and encourage our work, Look out for us on Patreon and see if you want to support the show there. While the show will always be free of charge to our listeners, Patreon supporters will have access to extra material, such as a bonus podcast where we answer your questions about the campaign and role-playing games in general. If you just can't wait, you can even get access to the full-length, raw and unedited versions of our gaming sessions way before they are released as finished episodes. Thanks for listening. 
Looking forward to meeting again next week.